Today's video is on how to reuse a painted canvas. I've got these two pieces that I did back in 2017, and I was really proud of them at the time, but they no longer look like me and I still have them. So I'm going to turn them into something new. And the step one is going to be to sand them down with my rotary sander and this 40 weight sandpaper. I have sanded these two pieces down and this is how they look right now. I failed to mention that um, they also had collage on them, which um, brings the kind of happy surprise that there's writing, which was on the back of the paper, apparently. So these are interesting, and this is gonna be a great foundation for a new piece. So the next step is to gesso them, and I'm normally I like this very, very thick uh, Grumbacher gesso. Uh, it has a, a great deal extra marble dust in it, um, and that's what I normally use. It's very, very thick, and it will cover everything. But today I'm gonna use Liquitex gesso, which is a lot more fluid, and I've added a little bit, tiny bit of um, Daler Rowney um, pigment ink, cadmium yellow hue, and a little bit of quinacridone nickel azo gold um, to give it a little creamier color, a little more vanilla, French vanilla color. And so the next thing to do is to cover these up with the gesso, and it's gonna be a little more sheer than usual than this Grumbacher. And then um, we will need to let these dry before moving on. I'm in the middle of a bird series, so I, the chances are pretty good that we're gonna get some birds on here. And, um, that'll be next. So you can see that it's uh, showing some of what's underneath and the pattern that I pressed into the gesso originally is showing up. There's a mandala pattern that I pressed into the gesso there that you can see a little bit of. So that's showing as well. I'm losing all my letters, so I want to bring some of that back. So I'm going to lift that out just a little bit because maybe we can use it in the new painting. Just an indication of the words. Okay, so that is uh, step two. And now we'll let this dry. We'll let the gesso dry and come back and get started with some free, freewheeling underpaintings here. Uh, this took about 30 minutes to dry, and we're ready for step three, which is beginning or continuing an underpainting for an interesting set of canvases for birds, possibly. I'm going to use limited palette today, so I've got uh, fluid acrylics, I've got quinacridone magenta, um, Thalo Blue Green Shade and Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold, all golden, along with white and black. Okay, so let's just get started here. I wanna um, play a little bit. Um, best way to get started is to not care at all what's gonna happen, and that works for me. It's easy in the beginning. Um, it just gets harder as time goes on when you're trying to make a painting. But right now, super easy peasy. So let's just see what happens now. Let's smooth it around with this. I'm liking that. So that's an interesting start. Maybe add a little white in here. I don't know. Just trying to get some interesting pattern, texture, image. Gonna add some line. Really just wanting to be free at this point. 
not worry about anything. Should we add some red? A little bit of the red sparingly. Let's try that. Got to get it open first. All right, so um, we'll do this thinner and we'll add a little bit of this yak, which kind of helps make the um, makes the paint into more of a glaze, um, transparent glaze. I can feel pink kind of creeping into my palette, which is a little bit weird. I don't usually use pink, but um, it says pink showing up. We'll see what happens. I don't know what that's about. Maybe we need some you know, brightness and play. Everything's getting kind of serious. All right. So um, that's a cool start. I think I want some line in here. We'll um, add a little black line. Which way do we want to do it? Um, charcoal or paint? Uh, let's start with some charcoal. Just see. It's too wet to do the charcoal. So let's use paint. Really like the um, high flow black for um, some thin black lines. Not going to splash it on there this time. I want a little more control and it's already quite wet. There we go. So I'm going to use the liner brush so I can get a really thin um, scribbly line moving through the painting. And um, Again, I'm not really, I'm just playing. And we can add some structured line. Which might show up later, might not. And, um, you know, we can... Uh, you can go with a little stencil too. I am going to sneak in some of this uh, cocoa, this um, Marabou art spray. And we'll just um, begin with a little pattern in here. Oh yeah, this, this one really uh, sprays out huge. So I want to limit, I want to limit the area of the spray. A little bit so it doesn't cover the whole piece. See what I mean? Okay, well, then this one will just press it down. See what we get. I love that. I love that um, sort of ghosty thing there. We'll use a little different one and cover it up again so that it's not too much. And I'll definitely be using some of the collage papers we've been making on the gel press plate um, with this, which has been super fun. Uh, so that'll be what, step four? Nice, okay. And we'll press this down. This is probably going to need to stop here and dry, and I'll come back in just a few minutes. We'll see if we can see any bird shapes in here, and we'll keep it moving forward. Um, it's great to paint this way and see what develops. The trick is you have to be ready to walk away and not keep going when, um, when it's too wet, because otherwise you'll just have a mess. Uh, something ex exciting happened while we were waiting, while I was waiting for these to dry, and this really would have dried in about 30 minutes. I got my order from joggles.com, and I got a new stencil, which 
I really like, as well as a foam stamp. So uh, we have some new toys to use as we move forward on these pieces. I'm also gonna wanna add some collage um, in time as these develop. Right now, I'm gonna add a little more paint and then I'm gonna come back with uh, some lighter paint, some actually some white to change the dynamic a little bit. I still don't see, I don't see the bird shapes at this point, um, but it'll come. We'll see it. We'll see it when it's time. So just add a little more, some little more layering as the layers come in, the colors do change. Let's try the new stencil. I'm gonna use some white, gold to give a nice off-white color. Need my foam roller. I love using the sprays, but I've not found a light spray that works. When I wanna use white, I've gotta go in with a foam roller. Okay, that's fun. I love that new. Stencil! Already need more paint. Um, that is fun. I can have fun with that on the gel press plate too. Okay, a little bit more. And let me take some of the color out of the foam roller that the foam roller picked up. Okay, wow. Let's see what else we can add. Maybe scribble around a little bit of white. Do we want to lay some collage over starting now? I am loving this collage paper so much. Um, this is Tim Holtz. Uh, this is amazing stuff. So um, I was gonna use my finger, but I'll try and behave myself. We'll put a little collage paper on here and um, it's almost gonna be time to let these dry again, let them rest. And then we'll see if we can find a bird in here. So let's just stick that on right there. And let's see what else. I, this blends in so beautifully. I'd like to find more papers that do this. And I like the um, sort of the, well, I like the, the print of it. So for now, just having fun and just putting things on randomly. Good. A matte medium, I didn't say that. All right, so um, yeah, let's throw on a little bit of the black and white polka dot in each one and then we'll let these rest. I don't want to cover I don't want to cover all the um, mandala pattern. It's really doing some interesting things underneath uh, all the layers. So okay. I'm gonna let it dry again. So these are already dry. Oh, I think it was about 15 minutes, not even. And I have this little bitty um, bird sort of reference, which is just enough to give me the shape. And we'll sketch in a couple birds here and I'll start to define one out. I'm gonna use um, charcoal to get the bird on here. We'll put this little guy here. Make him nice and plump. And sort of the branch that he's on. And then the side here. These are quite plump. Little birdies. Can't really see the feet. I guess it's not really all that important. That's the thing. It's easy to get caught up when once you start. Once you have a reference, it's easy to get caught in it. 
All right, so I've got bird shapes and branches, and I'm just going to um, kind of define find my shape there. I'm going to use a combination of our limited palette colors. We'll use white, a little bit of the phthalo blue, and a little bit of the quinacridone. Nicolazzo Gold, which gives a sort of a green, neutrally green um, color. We're going to cover a lot, a lot of what's here and just let parts peek through and probably bring some of it back. I need a little more of the nickel azo gold. Hate covering that. Oh, cool. We won't cover it all. And then we'll use um, collage to bring out the bird, among other things. There's our little bird. We can scrape some of the, um, leave some marks so that you can see what's underneath. Let's get the other one going. Covering my black and white polka dots, but I can bring it back. That's the thing about these. They have history and depth and character, and you can keep working and add things back, add, subtract, restore. Okay. So you can start to see the birds. Um, there's one. Here's the other. Let me scrape out some uh, branch here right coming up this way. Do a little scraping here as well. Okay. Be back in a minute with some collage papers we can add to make the birds stand out more. I have quite a selection by now of collage papers made uh, mostly on the gel press plate and I um, tore little bits of paper and got them ready to put on the painting here. I would have you watch me do that but it's kind of crazy making and boring. So I went ahead and did that. And then I'm going to um, just uh, use matte medium and uh, glue it down. I think I'll just do the one here um, for you. Like I said, I, I tore things up and got them ready. Uh, now I have to try and figure out how to get them on here <laughs> in the right order. Um, so this is what we'll do. Um, I don't know why I love doing this. It's, um, it really is kind of labor intensive and I'm, I'm trying to simplify more and do things the easiest possible way <laughs> now, but, um, I don't know, there's just something satisfying about it. And when you find that exact right piece to go uh, where you need it to go, um, it's pretty magical. So I'm just really making sure I can get this adhered down with the um, matte medium. And obviously it's probably not the best idea to use your finger, but that is the way to know if you've got bumps, air bubbles, etc. underneath that. And um, using a combination of papers, some of them I've made as recently as just the other day. And if you're curious on how to do that, uh, just look for the videos on the gel press plate techniques. And then uh, also, if you're curious about more, just leave me a comment and I'm happy to make a video uh, specifically addressed to what you are wanting to see. 
so we've got the bird coming in here. Got a little white running across there. And then I just like this spirally shape to add interest, it's just fun. And I just added a little tail here. And if you don't have collage papers um, ready, I'm actually thinking about selling collage papers. I probably have more than I can use in my lifetime. Uh, I like napkins too. This is one of my favorites, um, but I'm not using the napkins so much anymore. And another thing that I'm really loving is um, I'm finding these um, architectural renderings and they look super cool with some gel press designs over them. I want to use a little more design work here. I'm probably still in the place where I like to add more than I need to, but I guess we get to do it the way we want to do it, right? So I'm just going to add a little more uh, interest and let's just press that down on the painting and let's fill in some of the branch so we could add a little bit of color. You know, I don't see the path forward entirely before I, I guess I'm basically flying by the seat of my pants, you know, so that's where the best paintings come from. Uh, let's just draw out the branch a little bit more and uh, define that beak maybe. It's, it's really close to a sweet little painting from the one that we started with. Uh, that was no longer me. I'm actually pretty happy. All right, let's um, give a little more interest to the branch here. I suppose we could get, put a little feet, put some feet on there. And so, let's do a little more branchy. Let's add some red and give it a good cherry color there on the branch. Um, smaller brush. Okay, that's good for now. Well, we did it. Uh, we took two outdated paintings that nothing was wrong with them and created two new pieces. Here they are. Really happy with these considering where we started. So uh, if you stuck with me for the whole video, I'm super impressed. Um, thanks for watching. Once again, it's Vicki Reed with Paint by Heart. I'll see you next time.